In the human genome, there's an average of 19,000 genes. That's a whole lot of genes for scientists to figure out, many of which could have huge implications for treating diseases. But imagine if we had a way to knock down or somehow block the expression of just one gene, and then observe how the organism reacts to the change. By seeing the effects of disabling that one gene, we could figure out its function, right? The key lies not in what we all know as DNA, but a very similar molecule known as RNA. The knockdown phenomenon I described is called RNA interference, or RNAi, which is very important because it stops proteins from being made. To understand this, here's a little overview of protein synthesis, the two-step process of transcription and translation of creating proteins. DNA, which contains a genetic code for proteins, is unable to leave the nucleus. So in transcription, single-stranded messenger RNA, or mRNA, makes a copy of the DNA sequence and ends it through the cytoplasm. Here, mRNA attaches to ribosomes, where the mRNA sequence is translated into protein. But RNAi stops the process before translation by degrading the messenger RNA. Although mRNA is single-stranded, it can combine with another complementary mRNA strand to form a duplex. The strand that matches the original DNA sequence is called the sense strand, and the complementary strand is called the anti-sense strand. So how does RNAi relate to all of this? Well, it was first discovered in eukaryotes by Andrew Fire and Craig Mello in 1998, who experimented on the widely loved biological model organism C. elegans, a 1 mm long roundworm. They first individually introduced sense and anti-sense strands of RNA that coded for a muscle protein into the worms. But nothing happened. However, when they introduced double-stranded RNA with both sense and anti-sense strands, the worms began twitching, exhibiting that the muscle protein of the RNA match was no longer being produced. They had stumbled upon the basic mechanism of RNA interference, where the double-stranded RNA, or dsRNA, degrades messenger RNA before it can code for the muscle protein. The scientists later won a Nobel Prize for the discovery in 2006. Let's talk a little more about how exactly this process works. There are two main starting pathways, an exogenous pathway with foreign dsRNA and an endogenous pathway with dsRNA that originates from the cell. In the exogenous pathway, dsRNA that begins the process is introduced by either bacteria or viruses that produce dsRNA or introduced synthetically in a lab. Once it's in the cytoplasm, an enzyme called Dicer cuts the double-stranded RNA into smaller fragments, around 20 base pairs. These small chunks of dsRNA are called small interfering RNAs, or siRNAs. Afterwards, the antisense strand of the siRNA attaches to a protein complex called RISC, or RNA-induced silencing complex. This strand guides RISC to the complementary mRNA sequence, that has exited the nucleus but has not yet been translated into protein. Once the antisense strand binds onto the mRNA sequence along with RISC, an enzyme in RISC cuts the mRNA strand, which is degraded and can no longer be made into protein. The endogenous pathway is very similar, except that instead of siRNAs, a strand of microRNA, or miRNA, binds to RISC. This RNA is processed from a precursor miRNA that is encoded in the genome, so it does not have foreign origin. It also cleaves mRNA with much less specificity, so it can regulate a larger number of similar sequences. RNAi is called gene knockdown, or gene silencing, stopping the gene from being expressed. So what does this all mean? Well, many disease treatments are currently trying to block proteins of the disease from working after they have already been made. But what if we could reduce the amount of bad proteins before they are ever made? With RNAi, you can introduce specific siRNA strands to target the complementary mRNA sequence of that disease-causing protein and stop its production. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Although it may work fine in a lab, a major issue of introducing siRNAs into the human body is making sure that they reach a target organ site. When introduced into the bloodstream, siRNA becomes degraded by enzymes before they enter the destination cells. One potential solution for this is protecting the siRNA in a lipid nanoparticle, or LNP. Since the pores in the liver endothelium facilitate the entry of LNPs, and LNPs are coated with a substance that helps to enter liver cells, much of RNAi therapies are currently targeting diseases in the liver. There has been incredible progress in the development of treatments for hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and the Ebola virus. RNAi therapies are also being studied for treating other diseases, including HIV, Huntington's disease, atherosclerosis, and macular degeneration. And another super exciting field for RNAi is cancer research. 
targeting the oncogenes or cancer-causing genes and preventing them from creating tumor-inducing proteins. Although the field of RNAi is still burgeoning, it holds incredible potential for translating more and more research from mice, C. elegans, and test tubes to clinical trials that can save human lives. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. Want to learn something new about biology? Comment suggestions below for what I should talk about next.